and uh, welcome also from my side yeah here from berlin in germany uh, six hours ahead of you and um Yes, I, I, there's a little uh, change in the subject today. I mean, it's still about castles. And um, let's call it my home is my castle. Uh, and let's have a look at some castles because Americans, everyone loves castles. Everyone likes to go around and see some castles like this one, Biltmore, North Carolina, right? Okay, or more modern castles, but places where famous people live. We like to see and have a look at this. Another one that you might have seen or heard about it. And that brings me to the point and to the subject of today. My home is my castle. I would like to talk a man Uh, that was born in a very famous family. He was living a nice childhood, uh, not so clear. Anyhow, he was loved by the people. He was really known and he was very talented. Very, very talented. Yeah, don't get me wrong. And he was also into music. Yeah? So he became famous, loved by the people. And uh, He's had some relationships, whatever, but um, yeah, it didn't went that well with women, so nobody knows exactly. And then finally, poor guy, uh, much too young, much too young, he died in very mysterious circumstances, and he, his doctor had something to do with it, right? Whom I'm talking about? Sure. No, totally wrong. We go back, we go back to Ludwig II, but there is really a similarity in between these two kings of kind of pop. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at Germany, Germany map. I'm up there where the star is, Berlin, the capital. And beside this, we have 15 other states in Germany. Berlin is a state on its own. It's um, state number 16, but we want to have a look down there in Bavaria which is a very special region, let's say. And a lot of people like to go there. It's very attractive. I lived there with my wife as well. We got married even in Bavaria. And it's famous for their palaces. And we want to have a look at the Wittelsbach, so the dynasty, the parents, grandparents of uh, Ludwig II and of their castles today. First, Munich residence, Nymphenburg Palace. This is in Munich. Then we have the Hohenschwangau Castle and the famous Neuschwanstein as well. And nearby we have the little Linderhof Palace and we have also uh, Herren Chiemsee at the Lake Chiemsee. And uh, let's get an introduction from international guests. Most Chinese tourists to take the country's most oh. popular destinations on a week long tour. One of the highlights of such a tour is, of course, Neuschwanstein. The castle built for Ludwig the fairy tale king embodies the cliche of good old Germany like no other place. Just as I imagined it, magical and beautiful. I'm very happy. So I'm very happy that she is happy, but uh, as uh, it was said, it's the cliche of good and old Germany. It has nothing to do that much about. With Germany. First of all, we take a step back 700 years ago. There's already a, the kingdom of Bavaria. It exists since a very, very long time when Germany is, yeah, the Holy Roman Empire, German nation, but not, there's not a united Germany at that time. The kingdom of Bavaria. And it's ruled by the Wittelsbach family. Yeah, they are all uh, of one family. It's given from the father to the son and so on. And they rule their kingdom for almost 800 years. This is their genealogical tree. Don't worry, just till the year 1650. But what is interesting on it is there is to see down here the church of Our Lady, die Frauenkirche from Munich. How nice is this? Huh? That's really the symbol of the city of Munich. Let's go forward a little bit. This is when Germany got united, 1871, yeah? 1871, Germany got united and then went through some difficult periods, was growing, shrinking, however. And down there integrated in this now is the kingdom of Bavaria. 
but the kingdom of Bavaria at the beginning didn't want it to be part of Germany, even they were kind of against the Prussians, which are the blue zone up there. Let's have a look at the family that Ludwig II was growing up. His father, Maximilian II, his mom, she is Marie Federica, and she is actually a princess from Prussia, from the Blue Zone. Then it's himself, uh, Ludwig, and his younger brother, Otto. His father dies quite early. Uh, Ludwig is just 19 years old in uh, 1865 when he has to get on the throne and he has to rule the kingdom of Bavaria. Um, already in the first year in 1866, he has to go on a war against Prussia, the region in the north. You remember where his mom as a princess came from? Yeah, we Germans are weird. We were fighting all the time with each other. So no united Germany yet. The war is just for nine days, the Prussians win. And I guess since that time, at least, the Bavarians call us, coming from the north of Germany, always Zauplais, which is like a kind of a, the picky Prussians, uh, still in our days. In 1867, he gets engaged. He is now uh, 22. Mm, the engagement lasts not that long after about eight months he is getting out of this. And in 1870, he has now, he is forced by the Prussian and um, by, um, by the chancellor to join the army and to do a war against France. And with Otto Graf from Bismarck, who unites them Germany, he makes actually a deal to join the new Germany. He gets a little bit of money for this. So about uh, 4 million Thaler. Thaler, by the way, is an old German word for the currency that we had in the territories before. Thaler, Thaler is actually the basic for dollar. Thaler, dollar. It comes from that word, by the way. Okay. So, and he gets 300,000 Thaler for himself. How much is it? A usually family at that time, we talk about 1870, needs to spend their life and to cost, to cover the cost of their life in 1870, 130 Thaler for a family. He gets 300,000. And with this, he is doing then a lot of things that we will see a little bit later on. But we start in Munich. This is a place where Ludwig uh, was born, 1845. And it's Nymphenburg Palace. And nowadays, it's inside of the city of Munich. At that time, it was like a summer residence, a little bit far away from the city center. By the way, that fountain is run by a pump that still operates from 1806. So German engineering, at least at that time, was quite efficient. It has a huge park. The park has about 230 acres. And that means it's bigger than the park of Versailles. Let's have a look at the inside. Yeah, this is. Uh, the place, highly decorated, and I have to warn you, in this little show, you will get to see a lot of decoration. This is an interesting spot. It's the bedroom of his mother, Marie, Mary. And in this bed, he was born, and it was proven by some ministers, some authorities, who watched the queen giving birth to the baby. But they could not do it directly. So a mirror, the mirror that you see there, was put in a place that they, from the open door to the room, could watch through the mirror the birth of the baby. Why? Because very often the newborn babies were changed, replaced by some others. Okay, but now we go to see, this was their kind of summer residence, but they had in town as well also a palace, sure. This behind me is the so-called Munich residence, which is the winter palace or the town palace of the Wittelsbach family. It's really a treasury that it's a little bit sleeping or that it's left behind because the most tour groups usually go to Nymphenburg Palace 
because it's more famous and they go to Neuschwanstein castle of Ludwig II but I can tell you this place behind me the residents of Munich if you are in Munich you should go there absolutely definitely it's a must they have 80 state rooms that are all completely ornamented I will show here at the end of the film some pictures that I took now there and I'm really impressed. I have seen Schönbrunn in Vienna. I have seen Versailles in Paris. I have seen the Topkapi Palace in Istanbul. But I have never ever seen something like this. And I tell you, for students under 18, it's for free. So go there, please. Best regards and uh, stay human, Matthias from Europe. Yes, this is how the palace looks at the inside. We will get to see more palaces and castles that are also really um, decorated, a little bit overdone sometimes. But the unique thing here about it is that you don't have a waiting line, you don't need a reservation, and you can take pictures inside the palace. Yeah? Uh, also this, or this palace, not also, this palace got destroyed uh, like the whole of the Munich city center. And what is not reconstructed, as we see wonderfully here on these photographs, is the rooftop garden. There was a winter garden with a lake inside. This is something that Ludwig II added later on, on the top of the palace. It was leaking all the time, so it made no sense to reconstruct it. But... Uh, this is how Ludwig was thinking big. This is where he grew up, where he spent his childhood. This was when his father, Maximilian II, was still a prince, was his official seat. When he became then uh, the king of Bavaria, uh, in summertime, at least the mom, Mary, with the two boys spent the summertime here and they went very often hiking into the hills nearby and there probably uh, Ludwig II got as a child the idea once I want to have a castle there as well. This is Hohenschwangau. Yeah? Hohenschwangau was a place that started already as a castle over there in 1300 but this what we see here is much younger but nearby is Neuschwanstein and here I was this year in February. Ladies and gentlemen, hello world, welcome to Germany. Um, I just want to mention a small thing. If uh, you meet somebody that is telling you there is no global warming, you should definitely call the ambulance because I can prove it really in, in the way to say, okay, it's 30 years that I'm coming to this probably heard about it and been here. It's the 19th of February and I used the shuttle bus with my group and I'm standing on the so-called St. Mary's Bridge. This is usually closed from November till almost April because of snow and ice. So for me and my group, fantastic. For this planet, I would say a difficult situation. Take care, uh, stay human, keep on traveling in a correct way and watch out for the signs. Yo, this is how it looks in summertime. The view from Neuschwanstein Castle down to Hohenschwangau, the one castle where he spent his childhood. This is what we can see there. And um, Yes, you have to make it up to the castle. And for this, they have the shuttle bus. There is the possibility to walk. And uh, this shows also the position of the castle. It's totally crazy. It's on a cliff up there. More than 400, 400 tons of marmor, uh, uh, marble are there inside. And more than 400,000 bricks had to be brought up there by the workers and this palace was started to be constructed in uh, around the late 18, uh, no, 1860s, 1870. Yeah? 
uh, 1.5 million people come here usually during the year to see this place and have the view here on this fantastic located palace. To me, the outside is really the highlight. The inside you get to see on a guided tour, definitely something wow, yeah. Um, Ludwig II created here his dream castle uh, and he was influenced by the legend of the medieval times, the old German legends. And he was influenced also by the music of Richard Wagner, an opera composer, who brought these legends into operas. Yeah? For example, here, Parsifal. And uh, these are wall paintings because it's like a was like a big stage for him. He wanted even a bigger stage. And I can imagine that the architects he worked with got crazy about him because he got all the time different ideas and even more and in a static way, impossible things he wanted to be uh, built that uh, he changed several times the architects. Uh, next place we go to, it's much smaller. And by the way, it's a place that was finished while the other palaces and castles he built were unfinished. Second stop on our excursion day at the Bavarian Free Alps is uh, Linderhof, the second palace uh, in this area uh, built by Ludwig II. And as you see behind me, a very nice fountain and uh, the setting, incredible, beautiful, the mountains just around the trees and the palace behind me. It is a palace and is the only one that has been completed and where Ludwig lived and enjoyed his uh, stay completely alone. He didn't even like to have a guest or to be in contact with servant here. He had a small table that had a secret opening on the floor and would be set down in the kitchen and then pulled up by ropes and uh, he would have just have his dinner alone. Uh, the palace uh, has a lot of Baroque interiors and uh, a lot of, uh, of the uh, design is dedicated to celebrate uh, uh, Louis XIV of France, the Sun King. Uh, the palace is quite remote, so to come here you need to have either your own car or come on an organized excursion and uh, uh, it's not as crowded as uh, Neuschwanstein. It's small but beautiful to visit. And uh, uh, it is a wonderful setting. After the palace, you can also visit a grotto, which uh, is an artificial grotto. Uh, Ludwig II loved uh, Richard Wagner uh, opera music and he had an orchestra just playing for himself. So come and discover this place. You will enjoy it, love it. Um, and uh, this is another hidden corner of Bavaria uh, that uh, gives you the best uh, out of an excursion on a day. And here we have a look over the setting of the palace. It's beautifully in the mountainside, really very green. And it's enjoyable to go there, like Sarah, my wife, mentioned, um, because it's never that crowded. Yeah? It's not crowded as Neuschwanstein. And uh, it changed during the year, the park, really a fantastic sight. The inside looks like this. Please, please be aware this gets now a little over decorated, as I mentioned already. He lived here during the summertime. So, and uh, when he felt I'm in a mood to zip my Arabic coffee in my little Moorish kiosk, um, you can have a look inside this building just behind this red curtain. This is what is waiting for you. Yeah? He also loved to pretend to live in different times and periods. And once I asked a, a local guy there and I said, if he had all these artificial settings of different times that he, he had his stage, he was playing on that stage, right? Yeah, he had all all the clothes that would match and he played there to be a knight, to listen to the opera that was just performed for himself, to be on that artificial lake and with his beloved animals, the swans. A little strange guy. 
Nearby and here comes the castle that I like most because already of the setting in the so-called Bavarian Sea in the Chiemsee. At the Chiemsee there's an island which is called Herren Chiemsee and there into it was started his last project 1878 to 1886. 1886 all his construction of palaces stopped because he died. Six weeks later, all those places were open to the public because they had high debts, the family, and they wanted to make some income again. This palace, by the way, Ludwig wanted a copy of Versailles. He was in Paris, 1874, and he saw Versailles, and he admired Louis XIV, and he wanted his Versailles on that island. It was his most expensive project. Nearby is the island of Frauen Chiemsee with an old monastery, worthwhile to see as well on a day excursion. And this is the Hall of Mirror, not of Versailles, but of Herren Chiemsee. What I like about this palace is that you can see inside that it's unfinished, because here you walk also through parts that are unfinished. And you see it's done by bricks. It's just covered by marble or artificial marble or whatever was used. It was labor intense, this work. The palace had a price. Yeah? The price was 15 and a half million mark. Okay, if you think about some mansions now in Beverly Hills, you might think, eh, how much is it? 15 and a half million at that time. 15 and a half million. A worker that was working on that palace would get per day three mark. That means 1,000 mark a year. That means a regular worker had to work to afford a place like this for 15,000 years, just to give a relation to what this guy spent and how much money his people in his kingdom made. So this is something that drives me all the time crazy. Okay, and we don't have to forget, this is all artificial. I mean, it's real, yeah? But it happens in a time when we have gas lanterns. So we have uh, our streets are illuminated. We have already uh, trains running through Germany. This is at the same time the construction of the main train station in Munich. Eh? And we have by Siemens developed already and invented electric st streetcars. Sorry. Uh, we have steamboats that operate already on the lake. Yeah for the people that want to visit them later as tourists, the palace. And the Brooklyn Bridge is already standing in New York City. By the way, also built or designed by a German. Okay, I said we died. This memorial cross at Lake Starnberg marks the spot where King Ludwig II of Bavaria lost his life in the summer of 1886. The circumstances are still shrouded in mystery. On the anniversary of his death, people regularly assemble on the shores of the lake. King Ludwig, who lived to be only 40, remains alive in many of their hearts. Yes, in mystery, 1886 in June. He dies uh, four days after he was declared by his family and the government to be not able anymore to rule as a king. He was mentally unable. So he was sent to a hospital and uh, to a clinic, to a private clinic at the Lake Starnberg. And there the next morning he was found drowned in the lake together with his doctor. So there's the connection to Michael Jackson. Doctor, he was dead. What happened? Nobody knows because um, um, the family never allowed uh, autopsy to see what were the reasons. There are things, he committed suicide, he was killed. It's still a mystery today. Anyhow, he got buried, that's a photograph because also photographs existed at that time. When he was buried, he was not that slim anymore. He looks lower from the shape like me. He was, by the way, tall as me. He was even three centimeters, so that much, uh, one inch taller than me. And he was a good swimmer. So we don't know. He is buried, and this is back to Munich in St. Michael's Church at the pedestrian area. We very often pass by 
very often we miss to have a look there inside. Beautiful church uh, in the center of Munich. And this is where I like to go with my groups. This is Herren Chiemsee. These are my favorite teachers. They probably look at the moment also this show. Greetings to Mary if she is watching. Greetings to Roman. Greetings to my beloved uh, Michael and Judy. And tomorrow Sarah will talk about Bavaria and in general about Bavaria. And I guess it's also uh, at, uh, it's at uh, same, time. same time, like tonight. So Sarah will not talk about looting. She promised, she promised that. Eh? So thank you very much for watching. Uh, here comes, it's not the first question of the Kahoot, but who is the teacher in this picture? Thank you very much. Dankeschön und auf Wiedersehen. See you next week. I will talk about the city of Prague. Yeah. And uh, then also about Wanderlust and what is the relationship in between the Germans and nature and the forest and watch out for this and stay tuned, stay healthy and stay human. Thank you very much. And now it's your turn again, Dave.